Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is week 4 of the 2015 season and I am your host Crick Chronic War Catalyst here to cast the match today. Uh, two weeks ago I was not able to cast week 3 unfortunately because I was out of town for some work. Um, and last week was a league wide bye week. So we actually, due to a lot of uh, schedule conflicts we were having that week, we decided, being the nice, generous league we are, to just give a pass to everyone uh, and let's uh, let people uh, have that week off and able to take care of their activities and come back this week and resume the bloodshed now. So without further ado, let the bloodshed begin. On the blue side, uh, we have Google Rage Gank. They are playing for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, Doctors Without Borders is a uh, fantastic charity, uh, an international group that tries to send doctors to some of the more war-torn areas um, and uh, developing countries that are facing diseases, <laughs> as we see the Teemo hover, um, where most other doctors uh, will not go. Um, so these are some of the most courageous people uh, in the world, in my opinion. Of course, Google that thing you consult when you say I'm consulting the Oracle really quick to get an answer to your question. That's what Google is. So <laughs> they will be playing against uh, EY's Epic Yordles. EY uh, is one of the big four audit companies in the world, an international uh, company. Uh, they provide a lot of legal consulting, consulting and uh, advisory services, things of that nature. They are playing for uh, College for Every Student, a uh, fantastic charity in itself as well. Um, they help underserved students get to uh, and through college. <laughs> and they're currently working, um, I believe, in 27 states and in Ireland as well. So they are an international group. Uh, but without that, without any further ado, let's look at this pick and ban phase. We see for the blue side, Callista, Wukong, and Renekton. Uh, and for the red side, Ari, LeBlanc, and Janna. LeBlanc and Janna. Two uh, high priority picks for this. Uh, uh, Google Rage Gank team, um, two of the favorites here uh, for uh, s the players on this blue side um, and on the red side. So some great, <laughs> great scouting there for the red side. Um, no uh, particular target bans for this red side here. Wu Kong, uh, though he does have a pretty slow start in the jungle now, um, is still quite strong. One of those uh, CC machines once he gets going and just has absurd damage ratios, especially on his ultimate. So a great ban out there along with, of course, Callista. Very strong right now in Renekton. Typical rain, lane bully. Uh, if you're going to go Lissandra, uh, she's going to try and bully the lane herself um, with some of that poke control she does have, assuming that is a top lane Lissandra. It very well could be a mid lane Lissandra, so we will have to see where that goes. Uh, but we do have... Uh, the J4 pickup for the red side during the second round of picks uh, could be hinting at a uh, <laughs> infamous Narvin combo here uh, with the Nar coming in for the top lane uh, to get that ultimate combo with the uh, generated uh, uh, ground structures by the Jarvan and the Nar ulting people into that Jarvan cataclysm. It looks like the Lux will be the pickup for the mid lane here for this red side, and the Corky going to be locked in for the ADC. Definitely, wow, very fast lock in <laughs> for this last two picks for the blue side here um, of Zed and Thresh. So it will for sure be a, uh, well, not necessarily for sure, but will most likely be a top lane Lissandra as we do see uh, the swaps coming around here. Uh, Nar was not picked up, it was that Aurelia instead. Certainly not a bad combination with the amount of uh, lockdown and positional CC that Aurelia will be able to land uh, her ultimate on multiple people in this team fight and really get a lot of damage coming out there as we see some <laughs> swapping back and forth from this pro blue side. Can't quite decide which person they want to have go mid and be ADC here apparently. <laughs> um, but so to talk a little bit more about these team compositions here. Uh, it looks like um, we will have uh, in the bottom lane, uh, Corky will probably uh, be that lane bully um, as Jinx is a champion that takes uh, some time to scale up into the late game where she can actually be a hyper carry uh, unless she's fortunate enough to be one of those Jinxes that gets going early on. 
Uh, one of the drinks I always hope to be one day. <laughs> um, but so there might be a lane swap. And just as a side note as well, for both of these teams, uh, the uh, blue team, Google Rage Gank, is decidedly the underdogs in this game. So they will most likely be initiating a lane swap uh, just by virtue of that as well. That we could see um, the all more common nowadays uh, early invade to get some scouting wards down to see which lane the duo lane is going towards. Uh, the, the duo champions are going towards, I should say. Uh, that way they'll be able to get that lane swap. Um, and in the mid lane, uh, with Lux uh, going exhaust here, um, so that is not a support ex uh, Lux, that is in fact just an exhaust for that uh, Zed ultimate that will inevitably come out uh, and try and put tons of damage onto her. But uh, the strategy most likely for the blue team is going to be to get that lane swap and get the roaming top lane uh, jungler and possibly even support, depending on how the lane swap goes, to try and give an early gank possibly around level 2, level 3 to this mid laner. Uh, in Zed, because if you can get Zed going, especially early, um, though Lux can farm from quite a bit of distance, um, she is fairly vulnerable to ganks, and if you can get this mid lane rolling, uh, the lane swap uh, for the bot lanes will give them enough time to try and scale the Jinx into the later game, where she will be able to have uh, quite a bit of damage. Lissandra will be able to farm from afar once she does decide to go back to lane after the lane swap is initiated uh, with that range that she does have on uh, the fairly low cooldowns even at early levels that she has on that uh, ranged ability to see us from afar. And hopefully uh, if they are able to do that they will be able to stall out the game in the top and bottom lane enough to let them scale up, get their first round, uh, hopefully two rounds of items even. Uh, to let them get into this sort of middle late game uh, area where they can start to have perhaps some initially not the most favorable trades uh, but will be even enough to get them uh, stalling further into the late game where they will be able to uh, do quite a bit of damage and if they do get that Zed going early in this middle lane uh, with the traditionally at least uh, the one lane that never really has any shenanigans go about it as far as lane swaps are concerned. Um, that will give them enough of an advantage in the only traditional lane that we will see uh, in order to try and make it through that mid game. Uh, if Zed can uh, get it, get an early kill, uh, especially if it's a first blood onto that Lux, he will be able to uh, just shove her out of lane with the poke that he has uh, using that shadow to harass her as much as possible. Uh, and deny sort of the uh, team fight potential that Lux does bring with that immense amount of CC and just the damage reduction even she brings uh, during a team fight from getting a good AoE shield on a lot of her team members. So hopefully putting that uh, Lux behind will be uh, something that this blue side is able to do uh, if they're going to try and get this game into the later game here. As we do see some nice fancy skins, of course, River Spirit Nami, by far the best Nami skin. I don't care what anyone says about that recall, that song is beautiful. <laughs> Could listen to that all day on loop. And we will be booting into the game here momentarily. Uh, Zed, of course, taking that Ignite to try and finish off uh, that damage with his ultimate here. And we are officially booted onto the Rift. So let me just give me a moment here to get my... Champion layout all snazzy like the professionals here. All right, good. Uh, we do see mostly traditional starts. Um, uh, Lissandra actually opting to go with the flask uh, instead of the Doran's ring start, uh, probably because they are going to be looking for the slain swap. As we do see the pings coming out on this region, it looks like they are going to group up here uh, and try and catch maybe somebody out trying to throw an ward around this area, maybe poke forward a little bit. Uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled for that. It looks like they will see this coming. Uh, and that is already warded. So they will know that was all five. Zed not uh, going to chase them away before they get to that intel. Because that ward was out. Uh, but they will know uh, that the blue side has grouped together. So it might discourage uh, counter invade here. Even though blue is largely dispersing towards the top side. Zed not quite in vision uh, of that ward in the top side. So... 
no real information. We do see the flag thrown out from Jarvin uh, down in that bottom bush to try and see what the situation is here. Um, they do know some early shenanigans were up, but they're probably just assuming it was uh, a peek at an early first blood uh, potential here. Might not have enough information to guess that that will, in fact, be a lane swap. As we do see some pings coming out again, just a quick ward being thrown down from another trinket uh, to get some vision here as we do see Lux answering that as well to try and uh, get a little bit of line of scrimmage going on here. Uh, from both teams to prevent any early game shenanigans. Uh, and Aurelia all the way up in this top side, not even in the red jungle here. So she will be uh, completely uh, counting on getting into that lane. And this will be a successful lane swap. Lissandra actually notably going to be helping uh, the duo lane. Uh, or no, the duo lane going to be giving over all this uh, experience to the Lissandra off of that Gromp, who will recall uh, and just head her way down to the bottom lane. So, a little bit non-traditional uh, start here, especially uh, as Vi going to be walking over uh, here for her second camp instead of going straight to red because she didn't get that leash. She wants to wait till her smite is back off cooldown so she gets the heal. Uh, luckily for this Lissandre, uh, the bottom side did push this lane out. Uh, a little bit quickly so they will be able or she will be able uh, to use that range spells we saw right there to farm from a distance and thrush gonna be poking away <laughs> getting any auto harass damage uh, he can onto that Aurelia uh, though with the flask start, the flask start probably not gonna uh, amount to too many trades uh, in this bottom and top lane here so quite a lot of that damage we do see uh, that early power coming out from this quirky right now as Vi does pick up that red buff uh, and looks to head possibly towards this middle lane here. Now it looks like for both sides uh, on the top and bottom lanes, the minions will now be crashing into the turret, uh, giving those uh, traded top laners. No, actually the bottom side froze a little bit better here, able to prevent uh, that damage. Jinx occasionally taking a turret shot there. Uh, not too bad uh, in this situation as she was full health. Gives her a little bit of time to regen up there uh, as the blade surges come out just to clean up that CS under the turret. Lissandra actually getting caught up by a bubble there, so a little bit more damage. As Zed getting snared here, gonna take that uh, proc on the passive, uh, but that will not be enough damage to get him down. And Aurelia taking quite a bit of harass here as well with the uh, thrash hook and flay that we clicked away from almost instantaneously here. Uh, gonna force Aurelia to feel a little uh, self-conscious here in this top lane now. Gonna throw out that ward in the tri-bush. Might even call uh, J4 over to try and uh, prevent any uh, early dives here for first blood. As we see Nami not able to quite clear out that pink ward, but they will know that the pink ward is there in the bottom lane. Nami roaming, uh, trying to perhaps just get some wards down. Um, it looks like she actually does not have an award, so she is looking to just roam up to this mid lane, but unfortunately, Zed has gone back, so that will just be some wasted time unless she's going to come. It looks like she might even come all the way up here to this top lane uh, to try and get this with J4, as they do know uh, that this tribush has not had a warden thrown on it for quite some time. It looks like they're going to come straight through. They're not even going to go around, so they will be spotted out, but that will be... A lot of pressure relief for this top lane, actually allowing this Aurelia to try and farm. And as we look at the CS, Aurelia does have the advantage uh, overall out of this lane swap. Uh, the ADC is essentially tied right now. But a good hook on Anami and Flay, uh, flaying both of them into the flame chompers, so both of them actually are stunned. Anami gonna be able to flash away. Great flash answer from Jinx though to dodge the flag and drag. And with the heal and the Flay, that will probably be Thrush getting away. And actually going to try and hook that J4 under turret. He will take a turret shot for his trouble, uh, but not anything else since we are pre-6 right now. Uh, no potential here to finish off that kill. But that is a good answer to what was essentially a 3v2 here temporarily in that top lane uh, to make sure that it worked out in the red side's favor. So this is, if uh, this tempo can be maintained, uh, we will definitely see... Uh, this Google uh, Rage Gank team getting into the late game like they need. 
and Vi looking to create a play here in this top lane, sitting in the bush that is not warded. And if they're not careful, Vi can just queue. That is within Vi's Q range. Just a quick step outside of that bush will get him, so. And that will be the Thresh landing a hook. Great play as well. Nami nowhere to go, trying to get around those flame chompers. And that will have to be Vi taking the first blood there onto herself. Definitely not somebody uh, who is bad to have a first blood on, especially as she's gone with this uh, chilling smite here. She will be looking to create as much uh, gank uh, opportunities for kills as possible in this game. So getting her going a little bit early, helping her finish that uh, brutalizer uh, to get the enchantment on her jungle item going to be helpful. Uh, as we do see, a little bit of auto harass coming in from the Jinx to keep that Aurelia low as she tries to farm under the turret here with those blade surges. Uh, but Jinx does have to be careful to not take any more uh, turret shot damage herself as she is fairly low and Lux is coming around. I do not believe that is warded. No, that is warded. So they will see it and back off appropriately there in the top lane. And that will be the recalls coming out uh, for both this uh, bottom lane uh, that has swapped. I'm not sure if that will mean we will see Lissandra uh, trying to push out this wave uh, and then back herself to get that teleport. Uh, up here to the top lanes. We see Zed trying to get a little bit of harass down, but does see the Jarvan, so he will back off fairly quickly here. And no, that will be uh, Jinx and Thrush heading back up to the top lane again, so they're looking to continue this lane swap for as long as possible, though Corky getting quite a bit of solo experience right now might be uh, quite a mistake in the mid game here, depending on how uh, hotly these uh, dragons are contested here. Any mid game objectives are going to be. Uh, absolutely monstrously going over uh, to Corky's favor uh, since he does have uh, that infamous mid-game power spike since he's hitting that spike a little bit sooner uh, and having essentially unchallenged free farming here uh, as Lissandra's just trying to safely stay back avoid the harass herself um, she's not really creating too much pressure onto that Corky so he's been able to get quite a lot of CS highest in the game right now Zed does an ult in onto the Slux going all in and with the exhaust, that will be enough uh, of a damage reduction to save her just barely. Um, though she definitely does need to go back right now, which she will be doing. Jinx does have that 6, but looks like she's not going to be throwing that out. A little distracted right now, trying to take this turret. Uh, but with the Blade Surge in, that will be Aurelia landing quite a bit of shots onto the Jinx. So Jinx, luckily for her, will not be going down. Uh, but she is quite low now, and with that, uh, those two health pots running, uh, that will be her only sustain. She does not have any additional health pots in her inventory, nor any lifesteal at this point. So she will have to be very careful. Another jump in off a of blade surge like that could spell the end for this Jinx. We see uh, Zed and Vi not able to create uh, any opportunities here in the mid lane. Do, do get quite a bit of damage. Onto that mid turret. Um, unfortunately, Thresh not quite able to get the last hit onto that cannon minion. Nami procking that spell thief's edge as much as possible. But really quickly, I want to take a look at the mini map here. As we see, we do have a lot of deep vision uh, on the blue side jungle uh, for this blue team here. So when the dragon side does come up, uh, as opposed notably to the absolute fog of war here for the red team. So when this dragon does inevitably come up, good hook onto Aurelia there, making her take a lot of uh, additional auto harass, and that looks like it probably will be enough. No! Great flash from Aurelia! Comboed with the Nami bubble, that still might not be enough. No, with the Thresh play, that will be enough. Jinx secures it with the ultimate. But great play from Aurelia there. Unfortunately it wasn't enough, but uh, absolute great combo with the uh, timing of the Nami bubble to bait uh, the Vi into that bubble, so Vi did have to burn her flash for that, and Jinx absolutely deleted by this uh, Lux here, who's able to just snare and ultimate that Jinx down into the abyss. <laughs> so that will be an extended one for one here. Um, as we do see Zed going in, uh, baited a little bit into this engagement, and not able to uh, get out of it is the Lissandra, as her ultimate was already down. So that will be a one for one. Looks like Corky not going to be able to finish off that Zed in the bottom lane if we can actually swap to him. Yeah, making out with quite a bit of health here. Uh, but that is the pings coming out onto this dragon for red side. 
uh, after this uh, ward is cleared out with the Zed uh, heading back that will be the Lux, Corky, and J4 in perfect position to start off this dragon. That will be J4 starting off with the flag and drag into the pit. Uh, Jinx not going to be able to get there uh, in time. She's going to have to alleviate this pressure in the bottom lane unless she misses some CS. So this is most likely going to be an uncontested dragon for the red side coming out here. And there it is. That will be the first dragon of the game going over to the red side. A... Uh, minor gold advantage here, 1k in the lead uh, for the blue side, most notably uh, because of the top lane turret going down, creating some map pressure here, and that will be a flag and drag onto the Zed just to get a little bit of damage here. Harass that Zed a little bit, try and alleviate some pressure in the mid lane. Um, but with the kills fairly even right now, uh, and that dragon, typically we do see a first dragon traded for a top turret, so Aurelia going to go all in here. Uh, with that ultimate, but that is not going to be enough to claw able to get Lissandra out of there. Thresh taking quite a bit of damage from that Corky house. See, this is the power we're talking about from that Corky if he is allowed to solo farm in the bottom lane during a lane swap. Uh, he will be an absolute monster by looking to get somebody here. Uh, gonna think better of ulting the Nami who did flash under the turret there, so she did get a summoner spell for her trouble. Unfortunately, not another kill, though. And it looks like Vi will be uh, heading over to that Dragon Pit to see that it is empty. And that will be Lux getting taken out from that Lissandra roam from the top lane. Uh, post lane swap from that pressure by taking that top lane turret. It does have this minion line way pushed up. So that is the benefit we get uh, from that early top lane. Uh, even if it were traded for Dragon, which unfortunately the Dragon did go over to the red side just as a sort of out rotation. Um, but that does create a kill for the mid lane, uh, since Lissandra was freed up, and, uh, they will additionally turn that into another turret, uh, the outer turret for the mid lane going down. That will be hook on to Corky. Thresh gonna take it in, uh, gonna die to the turret here, but that's a lot of damage on Corky already, and that will be Corky down, going down with the Lissandra, and that is a clean dive for this blue team gonna also be the bot lane turret as well so that is the entire outer turrets for red side down now Vahe taking so low 20 hit points Lux almost getting the snipe onto her oh they gotta definitely be careful and respect that Lux damage um, with that ultimate snipe the range on that is quite insane an ever-present threat with that low cooldown as we do see the blue buff taken away uh, for this blue side here putting it on the Lissandra very good to have uh, the blue buff on the Lissandra and typically denied from her as she is a most commonly a top laner nowadays uh, that is gonna be a great feeling to have that blue buff on the Lissandra she will go back and buy some items really quickly uh, and even without refilling her mana bar, since she has a blue buff, we'll be able to teleport right to top lane to avoid missing as much CS as possible. J4 going to be disappointed to only get a ward here instead of that blue buff. Um, and we do see some pinks being cleared out by the Tsunami here as she throws some more vision down. So, looking at the items really quickly as we see some back and forth here in the top lane. Uh, with actually... Holding that thought, we do have Lux and Nami coming up to this top lane, so if Lissandra doesn't play it cautiously, she might overextend with those minions. Uh, looks like she's not going to. She might go up and try and ward Tribush. No, she's just going to go back. So good game sense there by uh, the Lissandra not to stay with those minions and try and push out that wave any further. Uh, though they do have a bit of an early lead here, they definitely don't want to push it. They want to maintain that as long as possible and uh, just sort of safely continue that without really getting too overconfident. Uh, the Zed gonna be pinged out here as he takes out a ward, throwing down that vision uh, with a pink ward. A lot of good ward control actually from both sides of the team as we see some wards starting to be invested here on the red side of the jungle. Um, but I would say that we should probably see more wards coming out inside of their own jungle at this point from the red team uh, since they do have their entire outer inhibitor, or not inhibitors, that would be insane. <laughs> they already have their outer turrets completely down. Good spot out on the ward here from that J4. Uh, but they're going to need some way to know uh, where this blue team is once they start to extend into the jungle, which they will inevitably start to do. Uh, as we see, the crab 
uh, being taken down here with a minute 30 on the dragon side. Uh, Speed Shrine will be up for this next dragon here. And that is a lot of vision being placed down. Thrush not able to dodge the flag and drag. Um, gonna be looking to be taken down. No, actually gonna try and pull J4 into the traps from Jinx. J4 gonna flash out and that will be the kill going down. Actually going over to Nami there uh, with the entrance of Corky. And that will be Vi going down as well. Uh, she will be back up before this. That uh, Jinx from Ultimate from Jinx actually not even able to get anyone no one low enough at the time. Uh, but Vi will be back up in time for this dragon. But that's not how you want to see the dragon start off with an evening up of the kills. Uh, J4 going to be looking to back really quickly uh, to get that uh, money he just got spent. And Corky going to just Valkyrie in. Probably get this Jinx with one more. Yes, that will be the ultimate shot from Corky coming out. Soloing out this Jinx, essentially. Definitely not the way uh, they wanted to enter into the second dragon for the blue side. A lot of momentum being lost here. Uh, hopefully, uh, this is what I was talking about with sort of playing it safe right now, uh, giving so much credit to that Lissandra. Uh, the rest of her team need to take a little bit of a cue from that and continue to play this out. Uh, Zed gonna actually have to ultimate out to dodge this uh, snipe from Lux, though he does so very effectively. Um, not able to get too much damage onto that Aurelia, but does maintain his own life, so that will be Zed making it out with some cooldowns burned for the opponents here. But most likely this dragon will be going as they try and pull it out over to the red side. They do have a, uh, wards on it, so they might go for a steal. They're going to think better of it, though. Uh, with the momentum starting to swing back from the red side, they definitely do not want uh, to give up even more momentum here with some kills off of that dragon. So we'll be evening up the dragon score here slightly. Uh, well, exactly here. Um, let's see if I can remember correctly. No, yes, <laughs> that is the second dragon, excuse me. The second dragon going over uh, to the red side. So, uh, that will be uh, a threatening uh, dragon presence here as that third dragon will be spawning relatively soon. Uh, and if that third dragon goes over to the red side as well, uh, we might see, start to see this game cascade out of control in favor of the red side, despite uh, this early objective presence as far as turrets are concerned that the blue side has been able to uh, take from red team. We might start to see, uh, unless they can start to make use of that rotational advantage they do have with those outer turrets being down, uh, it might all be for naught. So, gonna have to start seeing uh, those wards continue to come out from the blue side make use of that vision trying to create these fights in the jungle I mean there's a fantastic jungle fighting team Zed of course not necessarily the largest AOE champion far more assassin -y, if you will <laughs> bold statement there um, but with the Lissandra with the Vi uh, with the Thresh even there's a lot of opportunity for some good picks in the jungle um, some good uh, team fighting presence in this in these jungle skirmishes and we're starting to see uh, pink words coming out here as well in these sort of uh, pocket pink bushes um, I'm really gonna try and clear that out. I'm gonna take a little harassment from Vi for her trouble no actually just gonna walk away does not want to fight the fat hands right now but yeah so we're gonna start we're gonna need to see uh, blue side continuing to ward and you know, we do, again, looking at the vision, uh, Red Side has started to ward inside their own jungle, but Blue has lit up the map like a light bright. So if they can really make use out of these wards, I mean, that's the first step is getting those wards down, but the second step is actually making good use out of those wards. The Thresh was just barely missing there onto the Corky or Lux. That would have been definitely spelling a kill uh, in this middle lane here. Uh, but if we can start to see... Uh, these rotations, like Jinx, being able to be freed up and go and just annihilate the turret in the bottom lane, getting excited and getting out of there for free. Valkyrie not even able to capture if he did Valkyrie over the wall there with Vi and Toe probably would have just felt his own death. So, if we can continue to see great rotations like that where Jinx can just pick up a turret for nothing and a whole bunch of uh, solo farm under herself to boot. Um, from this uh, vision uh, control that blue side does have as we see a fight coming out uh, and that will be Zed coming in hopefully to clean this up and it looks like it probably will yes the death mark will be enough 
Uh, but unfortunately, that will be a one for one. Only the assist advantage going over to the blue side here. And they are going to be chased away, even. J4 trying to get the flag and drag. Thresh Lantern not even going to be taken. Uh, <laughs> as a little bit of her ass goes onto the Slux here, she's clearing out some pink wards. Uh, Red side definitely needs to get some of this vision control back of their own jungle. Uh, again, seeing that they are starting to ward a little bit more, um, they are working to get this back. Um, but they're going to need not necessarily just more wards down for themselves, but a lot of uh, sweepers coming out as we can see. Only two members have sweepers for this red side. Uh, they're going to need to start investing a little bit more in those sweepers if they want to clear out the vision um, that this blue side does have. Uh, though they are investing quite heavily in pink wards, which will have the uh, same net effect here. Beautiful crit on the Q from Jinx. They're able to one-shot all those casters. That, as a Jinx player, that felt good to see. Um, <laughs> but focusing back on my no unbiased casting of this game here. <laughs> um, we do see four members in this mid lane here, so Jinx and Zed trying to put down as much poke as they can, but that will be the first, uh, second turret, rather, going over to this blue side, or for the red side from the blue side, uh, as they start to crack the map a little bit open to try and get uh, an evening up of the advantage uh, of how much uh, vision they have. And Jinx is going to throw out the rocket to try and complement uh, the ultimate from Zed, but that's not going to be enough. And with the Aurelia jumping in, the last Blade Surge will be enough to kill the Jinx. And that will be two for nothing, three for nothing with the Thrush going down as well. Not what this blue side wanted to see. Caught out, the Zed going a little bit too deep into that fight and not able to get people low enough for the Jinx uh, to finish off, so that will be nothing uh, given over to this blue side. Quick pink bean throw down on the corpse of Jinx there, some delicious style points. Um, but after giving up that mid turret, trying to perhaps out of tilt get a little revenge, great bubble there from the Nami stopping by from being able to answer anything. That will actually be J4 going down, Lissandra just barely making it out of there alive with uh, sub 100 hit points very close there so that will uh, be a one uh, oof <laughs> bye. very close to dying yourself there those uh, um, boots saving your life with that extra bit of magic resist there but uh, yes with with that uh, two turrets going down in that trade um, the turret score is nearly even now uh, and perhaps even more critically in favor uh, of the red side here as those middle turrets are more important right now at uh, this stage in the game though uh, the, Speaking of out rotating we do have Jinx and Zed gonna just solo this dragon as soon as it spawns Great rotation given the timer they have on that to get their first dragon so uh, not only importantly deny that third dragon Which we do now see the Aurelia and the J4 coming uh, or and the Nami and J4 I suppose uh, coming and getting a little disappointed that the dragon was taken as soon as it spawned uh, without even having their jungler there. A little risky play, but very good rotational savviness uh, as I saw some people going back after that last engagement. Uh, everyone taking a little bit low, uh, getting those two turrets. Had to go back, and that will be all five members in this top lane. The rotations from blue side actually just outright stronger in this game uh, than the red side. There certainly has been some mistakes uh, for this blue team, some catches, and J4's cla Cataclysm actually gonna miss Lissandra making it out at the last moment with that claw. Fantastic play there. And Thresh actually gonna spot out that pink board too. Great pickup there on the way out. Fantastic play there from uh, Lissandra hanging around just long enough, and unfortunately, they did not have vision on the claw being already down. Um, so they thought they were able to catch her out and she was able to just barely get out of there in time and despite a good uh, bit of harass here from Lux that will not be enough uh, to initiate under a turret without minions here. And again right now we do see only a slight gold advantage over to this blue s over to the red side. Um, largely an even game with the overall objectives going in favor of this blue side. Looks like they are going to decide to just back off and give up this outer turret. Uh, hitting a stage in the game where outer turrets are a little bit more difficult to defend, thinking better of it, gonna just have a couple people uh, hang around to try and prevent an absurd push to take two turrets back to back here. Zed hopefully 
looking to get a flank here on one of these squishier targets. Um, some a good crit coming out from Jinx, but that's not going to be enough. Actually, Jinx just absolutely destroyed. Let's do a quick backup here to see the start of this team fight. That's I did not respect even myself uh, that power from Lux that was offered there, but she's able to just get a binding and just hundred zero that Jinx. <laughs> with some insignificant damage from the Nami there. I mean, that is what a uh, Zonia's Hourglass and Needlessly Large Rod, almost Death Cap, uh, Lux will start to do to you. So they definitely need to be uh, more cautious around this Lux. So that will be one kill and the turret going over this red side. Um, and that's what I was speaking about earlier when I said definitely not uh, a flawless game from this blue side. Uh, they have been making some mistakes as they do see that blue spawn. They're going to hang around just a little bit to try and get that blue right as it spawns. Unfortunate timing for the blue side there with that. Um, but yeah, overall though, despite uh, making some uh, mistakes that have changed the way some team fights have gone, I would say that uh, this red side overall has, uh, or the blue side overall has a stronger rotational advantage and thinking they were able to catch them out, J4 trying to stand on the lantern to get some misclicks there, not going to happen. Corky with the ultimate, going to try and finish her off. No, not able to get that last shot in to finish off the Lissandra. Um, and the snipe from uh, Lux only hitting the Jinx, not quite able to 100-0 her out at this point uh, with just an ultimate. Does need the binding as well. Um, but yeah, certainly, uh, it does still feel, uh, despite the fact that this game is starting to tilt in favor of the red side, that blue has demonstrated that they do have really strong rotational proficiency here, uh, and can continue, uh, if they can continue to out, uh, rotate this red side, they certainly can pick up a lot more objectives, um, with sort of a staggering of turrets, uh, still available on the map, uh, on red side. They can certainly get some uh, good push combinations with uh, that Zed, who is just somebody who loves to split push. Uh, if they can get him or Lissandra with that teleport, who does have quite a bit of good wave clear herself, um, they could even initiate just an outright 1-3-1, one, one, um, now that I look at it, to try and siege uh, that further out inner turret uh, in the mid lane, uh, while allowing those two split pushers to create a lot of pressure in the side lanes that do not have those turrets still up. So there's a lot of potential right now with Sandra throwing down some vision. Uh, again, just taking a quick look at the vision. Uh, there's not much vision anymore for the blue side. They do, do need to get a fresh round of rewards out if they want to start uh, making advantage of that vision that's been allowing them to do these out-rotational plays all game. By far their strongest uh, advantage in this matchup uh, is that rotational proficiency. So if they're going to uh, continue to try and keep that up, they're going to need to uh, keep warding not just a uh, few wards in the river like they have now, but get those deep wards again in the jungle so they know where people on the red side are headed, where they are going. Um, but it looks like this uh, red side dragon, or the, <laughs> the dragon uh, that's spawning in a minute uh, might be a red side dragon uh, with that speed shrine already up for the red side. Uh, there are some wards down in the river near the dragon pit for the blue side. This tri-bush ward is going to be swept out. Uh, so they will know red side is setting up for this. With the siege in the bottom lane. Thinking about it, teleports are up for both top laners. Thresh going to try and get a hook. Going to slightly uh, miss there onto the J4. Um, but with this wave cleared out now, uh, that will be some free pressure on this bottom lane. Lissandra actually going to teleport immediately right now. Try and get an engage. She will get a good lockdown, some CC, and but now Aurelia is here, so it's back to a 5v5. Thresh bubbled out, or excuse me, Zed bubbled out, but he will get some damage on, but that will not be enough damage to finish them off, and that will be Vi and Zed going down. Thresh caught out as well. Thresh going down. Uh, Lissandra probably going to make it out all right. No, J4 going to continue this chase here. It looks like Jinx might actually be able to finish off. If they can get this Jarvan, uh, that would be critical. Nice crit there. Uh, uh, or excuse me, static shiv charge from the Jinx to finish him off. And now that will be no smite up for this dragon. Uh, J4 going a little bit deeper, though they did want to keep that pressure up to chase them off of this turret to get this inner turret uh, in the bottom lane. They will not have a smite up, and Vi is back up again with her smite up. So if they try and start this dragon, this could be a hero steal from Vi. 
Though they do have uh, some good vision for the red side um, around. Possible areas not directly behind it, but it looks like Zvi going to the middle lane, not even going to contest it. She could have had a chance to steal it there. Going down after it hit 26 hit points. Definitely a chance to steal there, but going to not want to risk um, giving up her life, giving another kill over to this red side uh, in exchange for that dragon, but uh, that was a very critical dragon, that third dragon that gives that movement speed buff over to everyone on the red side, so uh, red side, which up to this point uh, has had some <laughs> the flag and dragon, not quite connecting there, um, but has had uh, some great picks um, and initiations going to be able to initiate and catch out people all that much more frequently with that movement speed now. So perhaps, though very risky, uh, might have in the end have been the wrong decision. Oh no, Vi able to not, not able to queue over the wall. That will be Vi going down. Oh, that is just absolutely painful to see. Poor Vi just trying to get out just an extra second sooner. Uh, to make sure she takes a little less damage, jump the gun ever so slightly, um, and pays for it with her life. So, without the smite up, oh, Thrush gonna be just absolutely collapsed on there. Zed having to try and shadow away, looks like he will make it out of there alive. Uh, but with Vi down, I mean, what, what are you to do but try and throw out wards as Thrush, uh, to get vision on what's actually going down in this Baron Pit. Uh, they actually don't even clear out the wards, daring blue side to come. Uh, which will not, throwing out just a little Jinx rocket here. Um, perhaps throwing out a little bit sooner than necessary, but probably not going to matter overall in the grand scheme of things. And that will be the Baron going over to the red side. Uh, and that looks like this might be the point where the game starts to get a little bit out of control here in favor of the red team. As we do see a little bit of uh, cleaning up in these lanes uh, that had some minions stacking up a good farm. Uh, right before they go back and give a little buff over to these uh, minions here of that Baron. I mean, if we're going to start, we do see a lot of ward coverage from both sides. Um, unfortunately, most of it around the Baron Pit, which is uh, largely no longer a relevant uh, area in the map uh, for both sides here. I'm going to be more focused around this bottom side. Trying to catch a, an initiated pick here, and they do get a lot of damage onto that Corky. The uh, bubbles and knockups from Nami preventing a lot of damage coming out of that will be a double onto Corky. Jinx not able to get the last. No, she does get that last shot off onto that Corky. Is going to try and 100 zero or solo kill this uh, Nami who actually does not go down. And that will be a uh, four for one, almost two. Uh, over to the blue side here. As we see just the array of bodies. Uh, unfortunate. They even got a catch there. You know, I mean, you got to start to question for this blue side if uh, a little bit of tilt is coming in here. Given um, how this game was initially very even, if not um, slightly tilted in blue side's favor at a couple points. Um, but they're hitting a point in the game where they're starting to get a little uh, off their center. Uh, again, the, those great rotations um, were what was uh, keeping them in this game. And if they're going to try and get some like catches on a team that's this far ahead of them, I mean, they even did get a kill from that. Uh, but it was not enough. It took so long. This Corky so far ahead, 5, 2, and 7. Um, similarly with this Aurelia, 7, 3, and 4. Those are not the people... Uh, you're going to want to try and catch out. I mean, of course, being how squishy Corky is if you can really catch him out, but if you're going to have some sort of scrappy team fight like that where Corky's Valkyrie is up, where there are teammates around for him, you got to find better catches than that if you really want to uh, get a team who's 10 kills ahead of you, uh, 8,000 gold ahead of you. you you got to have a little bit better um, initiations than that. Um or you gotta just try and continue to play the map like they were doing before. It is getting ever harder as that lead does keep growing for the red side. It gets harder and harder to try and play the map in that way. Um, to out-rotate people. Thresh caught, out, caught up by the Lux Snare. Gonna mean that no additional initiation is followed up from Vi. But they are able to chase them off of the turret. Um, a little bit of damage trading back and forth. Uh, getting them quite low. Thresh actually 
Needs to be careful. He's quite low in range of being sniped by Lux. No! Thresh gonna make it out alive. Thresh with under 100 hit points at the time. Vi gonna try and initiate there with her ultimate. And that will be Lissandra picking up the kill onto J4. And Thresh finally going down. Didn't go back. Uh, did get a last <laughs> last uh, ditch hook out onto the Nami. But unfortunately nothing was able to be, be made of it. As all of the initiators uh, have gone solo. They cannot... Uh, hang around any further and Jinx doing her best with those rockets to try and wave clear as much as possible but the blade surge onto that Zed gonna mean that he's gonna go down here and with that death mark no the shield from Lux gonna shield out so much of that damage um, but that will not even be the Corky going down and with that inhibitor uh, now barren available uh, for this red side uh, you gotta think there's a, after this dragon, there's gonna be another siege starting up uh, of that middle lane. Jinx trying to go out into that jungle. She's a little hesitant given uh, the fact that the red team just went through there, but they know they have to contest this Baron. They have to catch it up. And that is a great start for the blue side. They uh, critical skill shots missed for the Lux and J4 all by himself. Gonna get 3v1 and just taken out. Lissandra able to uh, get a lot of uh, stasis time for herself. So that 3v1 ends up going in her favor. Actually going even, I should say. In a 1 for 1. So overall a 2 for 1 in favor of the blue side. And that is a smite up for the blue side with this Vi. And the J4 is down. So they're gonna let... Uh, both sides back off, create a little bit of false sense of security for this red side, and then start that dragon back up uh, with that smite advantage that should very easily be this uh, dragon going over the blue side, and that's uh, exactly what they need to start doing, getting that second dragon of the game, putting them back in range to get that critical third dragon. It looks like they're going to try and catch out this Aurelia. I'm not quite sure this Aurelia is the target they want. She has quite a bit of armor, and that is a Zed and a Vi, but it looks like that might be enough to sustain from the Nami, and no! The Jinx ultimate not quite enough, and J4 gonna be able to come in and try and catch out this Vi, who will just queue over the Cataclysm, uh, but that's gonna be overall a lot of <laughs> summoners and ultimates burn for both sides, but nothing coming out of that. Unfortunate that, uh, you know, Aurelia had a little bit of lifesteal and those, uh, uh, all that armor built up. Otherwise, she definitely would have gone down there. That was quite a bit of damage put in, but that's, you know, that's why we've hit that point in the game, especially when she's so fed to be ahead in her, uh, item build, that she just cannot be jumped on like that. She is, uh, too far out, even with, without her team there. Ended up not going down. Just a Nami heal and popping her ultimate was enough to save her from going down so they're gonna need to try and uh, continue to get good catches like that but they're gonna need to find better targets than that Aurelia there are a lot of juicy targets still out there um, J4 definitely built a lot of armor as well um, so if they're gonna try and uh, continue to get these catches it would probably be ideal to keep Lissandra in it Lissandra certainly not behind in this game um, Still keeping up with quite a bit of damage herself, and with those cooldown boots, able to uh, hit that 40% CDR uh, and get a lot of uh, spell damage out very frequently. As the Baron does spawn here, it looks like, oh no, that will be Lissandra actually going to continue the stasis scene, uh, but will be going down in the end. And the Lux ultimate damage gonna be able to take out Thresh too and create a chance for uh, Aurelia. To finish up that jinx and get the kill and that looks like uh, if this collapse doesn't work out it will at least be a baron going over no Zed gonna shadow away just barely um, but by gonna try and actually 1v1 this Jarvan um, not gonna be able to with the quirky coming here though unfortunately for her uh, she might be able to get away with some fancy feet here that is a good smite on the J4 trying to create what she can but no, with that last auto attack and the burn, that's definitely going to be Vi going down. Um, and w with that uncontested, or rather undefendable mid turret, mid inhibitor, excuse me, <laughs> going down, uh, there's no way uh, this Baron's going to be able to be stopped. 
And at this point, we're going to see um, a over 10,000 gold in the lead red side here with the super minion strolling down that middle lane, uh, the most critical lane for overall control here. So, uh, gotta wonder about what exactly can be done here. Jinx gonna throw out a desperation ultimate and see that it is just a little too late, unfortunately. Oh, 100 zeroed again by the Lux is Jinx. Uh, good lantern from Thresher to get Zed out. Uh, but gosh, that, that QR combo from the Lux taken out, uh, and almost taken out even, uh, if you include a lot of times when she's almost 100 zero Jinx, almost four times now, I believe. Um, yeah, a lot of damage from Lux. Certainly, uh, vulnerable during the laning phase, uh, with not too much escape potential, uh, but she was not, or she was able to get ahead. She was not denied. So, she's hit that point in the game where she is an absolute nightmare. She's got the range. She's got the power to sit back and still do immense damage and bring power to this game. I mean, with the Zonia's Hourglass completed as well, on that Lux, that'll give her enough time uh, to hang out and try and let the rest of her team heal uh, people away from her if she even is caught out. Um, the QSS uh, is done with the GA on the Corky. Not a good target as well. So, I mean, the only real targets, air quotes at this point, um, for the blue side is that support Nami, um, who's gotten a little bit tanky herself <laughs> with another frozen heart. Three frozen hearts in total. Um, definitely not bad pickup uh, given this team composition, but uh, with the tilt towards all that uh, armor rather than MR, uh, for this red side, Lissandra can be the hero of this game. Again, she's certainly not behind in her build. Uh, and with that Abyssal Scepter, uh, what little MR is available uh, is going to be uh, taken out largely by that Abyssal Scepter uh, passive on it. So it is possible if we can get some good engagements uh, in favor of the blue side, we might be able to have Lissandra come in and be a hero. No, not with that engage though. Lissandra instantly blowing the ultimate on herself thinking that she was going to be jumped on but red side playing it safe good zonia's on lissandra to miss the uh uh ultimate from lux but she is gonna absolutely be jumped on by that valkyrie cataclysm combo and that will be the game going over to this red side with the super minions already in base so hard fought game from the blue side definitely and great really strong showing in the early game uh as the underdogs uh, in this matchup, definitely uh, put it out there that they are not a team to be taken lightly, especially in the early game, and can still create some contesting of these situations from behind. So going forward, definitely going to be a, a team that has to be looked out for, but that will be the game going over uh, to EY's Epic Yordles uh, for uh, the win here in Week 4. Uh, looking over the uh, score summary really quickly for the game, um, I mean, largely it was just that Lux and Corky, uh, even Aurelia did quite well, but that Lux and Corky, uh, as the two carries for the game, able to really just get going um, and contrast that with the Jinx, who simply was not able to get going. And she, Despite having a really solid farm, um, that did overall just really keep the damage uh, disparity for both teams. Uh, in a sizable amount. So that will be the game uh, going over to EY's Epic Yordles. Thank you for watching. We've got another game i got to dive right into. Uh, so I will not do the usual outro, but stay tuned, and we will uh, continue to cast all day today.